Welcome to this book editor's interview. My name is Christina Teodorak, and I have the great honor to interview today um, David Aldrich, Alice Sivera, uh, and Lawrence Wabe. Uh, on their very important uh, book published uh, by Springer in June 25, 2023, the book is entitled The Strategic Management of Place at Work, Why, What, How, and Where. This book is part of the book series, Future of Business and Finance. Welcome all of you. Welcome David, Alice, uh, uh, Lawrence. Uh, I'm very excited to interview you today. Um, and also I would like to thank you for accepting to share your uh, insights on this important book. Well, thank you, Christine. It's wonderful to be with you. And then also my, my co-editors. And there are a lot more than co-editors as you'll probably hear once the interview gets going. Perfect. Uh, welcome, Alice. Welcome, Lawrence, too. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's a big opportunity to be here once mm -hmm. again, at least for me. So thank you for inviting me. Yeah. Thank you, Christina, for having me here. It's a very, um, I really greatly appreciate it. I'm delighted to be here. And of course, uh, this is a very special interview because uh, all this uh, team has uh, go beyond with this important book, but also we overcome any technical issues to, to perform uh, this interview. So based on that, uh, I would like to uh, to start my first question. Uh, and I would like to hear more uh, from your point of view uh, to tell us more about uh, the, the book, what the book is about, what's the, the key idea behind. So I give you the floor to describe us the book. I don't know who want to start to jump well, in. I, I actually haven't read it, so one of the other two should, should comment. <laughs> okay, um, I can start. Uh, actually, the book is a celebration book. It's a book about the anniversary of the summer school program and the cultural study pro program by the universities of Augsburg, Bergamo, and the universities. So it's a celebration book, but it's way more than a celebration book. It's actually, um, the book is about applying a, a theoretical framework, a framework by David Aldridge, everything in its place, and bring it to life. So we have taken this framework and translated it into practical terms. So we um, thought about, hey, we have theory, how can we um, apply it in the, in the practical world? So we have measurements, sources, we have real life examples, we have case studies. Um, and these case studies, actually, the key essence of the case study is more, it's not about the past, our future will be measured, like the, our economic performance will be measured. It's a very moment, it's a future, it's the public policy we implement in the day for the future. And this is actually a very good um, study the book that it's not a strategy at all that fits for every place, it's quite the opposite. And this is like the message we want to bring with books. This is like the purpose that is everything is different but we need to think about the future in accordance with the past. So this is like the book. And we have a couple of case studies, um, over 25 case studies in the book. Um, we worked with students and yeah, I think it's a very nice piece um, of public policy management of economic performance of a place. And everything combined, or it's combined in the summer school program. Excellent. Can you please explain us? It's very interesting to hear more about uh, the title. So what does it mean? Uh, our listeners would be extremely interested to understand what is the strategic management of place at work? Um, I think that it's a title that um, makes a lot of sense because of what we put in. Because basically we try to apply um, the framework from David uh, to, let's say, real cases. And we chose places because basically um, it's reductive to think only to, let's say, cities, regions, um, countries, nations, and so on, but also smaller aggregation of, uh, let's call it factors. So people and let's say economic and environmental condition can work together to uh, make the situation of a place as it is, and also um, suggest some, let's say, policy uh, intervention and um, changes 
for the situation that we have. And yeah, I mean, we started from um, places that students uh, participating to our summer school highlighted as important and as interesting. So you can also see, let's say, an international collaboration and several points of view that work together in, un in underlying some realities that deserve to be studied. Excellent. I think, uh, David, uh, your co-editors, uh, as all of us, we are extremely inspired by your, by your work. And uh, actually, as uh, Alisa was saying, uh, the, the book is inspired by your framework in places. Can you please tell us more about what is this framework? Yeah, the, the framework, you know, everybody knows that organizations, firms, companies, startup companies, but also nonprofits, universities, churches, they all have strategies how to attain their goals. But there's no analogous field for uh, a city, for a region, for a province, uh, uh, which is what Lawrence and Alice are talking about places because these are, these are geographic, but also policy places. So what this original idea was to introduce what the Germans call standard politik that we translate as the strategic management of place. Now, uh, uh, yes, that idea emerged in a, another book, uh, maybe 2015 uh, that I published with this idea, really taking the idea of strategy. It's not just for firms and organizations, but it's also for uh, communities, whether it's uh, uh, Bergamo, where Alice is, or whether it's Augsburg, where Lawrence isn't because he's in Bloomington right now, or whether it's uh, Toulouse, where you're, uh, you are right now. They're all they're all places, and these places, uh, uh, what we uh, find, what we advocate, is that they'll do better if they have a a, a strategy, but not a random strategy, but rather a well thought theoretical based strategy, how to attain what they want, what their goal is, which is what we call performance. Now, the part about uh, uh, this st strategic management of place at work, you know, Lawrence and Alice were being very kind as young people are prone to do with me because what they didn't say is, yeah, I mean, maybe the concept came from me, but in this book, they did all the work, they and the student teams, because in these chapters, Lauren says there's something about 20 uh, studies of different places that the student team teams chose. By the way, it's not just from one year. This is a retrospective from 10 year, the best of, you know, the, 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 the rock groups used to have best of albums. These are the best of strategic management of place studies coming from our uh, our uh, uh, class, really, where we bring students together. The students really did the work, and they were directed by uh, a leadership team of Alice, Lawrence, uh, uh, and then Jonah and some other people as well. So I like the title because, uh, yes, uh, uh, perhaps the framework comes from me, but everybody else did the work. Excellent. Thank you very much for sharing this uh, important uh, background for the book. And also, if um, uh, if I am not mistaken, that the, uh, this book is like a follow up from uh, uh, the the book, or is it also inspired uh, by the book you published in two thousand fifteen, uh, the Seven Secrets uh, of uh, Germany. Uh, so, uh, how, how we can say that this book brings new uh, new information why uh, why your this book is important and what we learned uh, that we didn't know before so how would you can position this follow up series from uh, uh, the seven secrets of germany and now uh, this new book uh, that provides new insight about the strategy of places at work uh, i think i can start off by taking on this one um uh, so thank you very much for the invitation happy to be here uh so as uh, I think uh, all three alluded to before, the the framework is laid out in one of David's books, the uh, Everything in Its Place, and then expounded upon a little bit in the Seven Secrets of Germany that uh, 
uh, David wrote with Eric Lehman. Uh, but what the what this book kind of adds to that conversation is is moving beyond the the theoretical foundations of the framework and really pulling it apart so that you can understand it, which we do in the introduction of the book, um, adding more context where it comes from, how it functions. And then each of these chapters, each of these studies that David was talking about, uh, they give you a tangible way to see how it's applied in real situations, in real places, in a diverse um, selection of places from all over the world, different sizes, different cultural contexts, different historical contexts, so that practitioners can really see that there's this theoretical tool developed in the university place, but has real world applications in a number of different contexts. So I think one of the beauties of David's framework, if we're allowed to continue being kind to him, is that it's it's it exists at a level of generalization and abstraction so they can fit any context. That's part of the beauty of it. And so then the book gives us all this way of seeing how that plays out. So we are seeing it in this context and what it means for how public policy is developed in one particular place. And then in similar cases or in very different cases from all these other contexts as well. But at the core of all these cases is they're all working with the same theoretical framework. But what that then means in that specific context becomes unique. And this book kind of is then a how-to manual, and that's why it's at work. Perfect. This is excellent because we can see how uh, the different uh, frameworks can be contextualized in different contexts, how each context is unique and also shape different strategies. So if I understand well, uh, we have this uh, book that follow up and advance, uh, and we see the evolution of the, uh, the, um, the knowledge and the scientific um, accumulation of knowledge all these years, and how it oper operationalizes in different contexts. Uh, can you situate where the idea of this book or the first idea came from? What was the, the inspiration uh, that, uh, that evolves all, all these years? through these different uh, editions, a book, and now we have uh, this uh, new book uh, about the strategy of place. Well, I, from from the way I remember the conversations, I guess I'll start there, uh, was that the, the idea that the, the summer school between these three institutions, uh, IU, uh, the University of Augsburg, and uh, the University of Bergamo, that, that programmatic partnership was coming to its 10th year anniversary. And so we were thinking of, what is a good way to commemorate this? And uh, David and Eric, they were discussing, and it seemed that this this book and the format that it ended up taking was kind of the child of that idea, that they wanted to commemorate the relationship, uh, but in a way that was more meaningful than just, you know, a yearbook, I guess you would say. Um, what are the key messages that you wish uh, to share with the readers? Are there any key messages so that uh, potential readers are re reading the book and would like to share what they should have in mind when they read the book? Yeah, if you want, I can start saying just one key message and then I will leave the others their own, let's say, interpretation of what uh, we should learn from it. I really think that um, when you look at our uh, book, what you can really realize is that uh, there is no one fits a whole rule. So basically you have all contexts with their own specificity and according to those specificities, you can derive some um, key, uh, let's say, aspects of the situation of a, a place or a reality and community. And something that I really uh, enjoy the most is that together with, let's say, um, suggesting some policy evolution from the uh, economic uh, situation that you have. Um, we also present some co counter arguments. So explaining that it's not so easy finding solution to some problems that we detect or some weaknesses that are, or some strengths also that the uh, places have. But basically you need always to be um, critical and being able to understand it something that works for a place, though do not necessarily work for some other places. So be aware about the, um, yeah, the peculiarity and the uniqueness of each place. I think um, the book is the perfect example that theory and practice can be connected and when done right, it can lead to um, policies that are for the good for, um, for economic um, development of a place, for societies. Additionally, as Alicia already mentioned, it's really like 
kaleidoscope. It's, it really depends on the different factors of a place when you want to um, achieve economic development of a place. It's not only the past, it's also like the very moment. It's, there are so many different factors and um, components of um, public policy and the place that you need to be aware of. It's a little bit like kaleidoscope. It really depends on how you, um, on the perspective you have on the place. And it there's no right way to do it, but there's like the specific good way in the place where you can achieve economic growth. So this is like also like a key message of the book, I think. You, you know, more than um, almost anybody in the world, our interviewer, uh, Christina, is associated with entrepreneurial ecosystems. And this book, in a way, uh, is a warning, if, uh, not necessarily to Christina, but to policy people, people in the real world, that there's more to a strategy to enhance how a place is doing, to make it better. There's nothing wrong with entrepreneurial ecosystems, but that's one play in a playbook that's this thick. That's what you're saying, Lawrence and Alicia. There's lots and lots of different strategies. And then with each strategy, there's lots and lots of different instruments. Now, entrepreneurial ecosystem has been made famous by Christina, or I should flip it around. Uh, Christina's become world famous and the chair of the entrepreneurship division of the Academy of Management because of her uh, uh, careful research and work with entrepreneurial ecosystems. At the same time, what we learn from the book, it would be a mistake to say that is the strategy that every place should follow to get better. That's one strategy out of a very large playbook. Thank you very much, uh, David, for uh, adding this comment, uh, which is extremely important indeed to have this overview to when we engage uh, in building places, successful places or ecosystem. It's important to have all this play with strategies and engage fully in the strategy, which is the most convenient for the place. So it's very important to know all this contextualization. And actually, you say that this is why this book is important, because it provides different examples and case studies to see and identify the specificities to choose the best, the most suitable, the most ideal strategy for its place. Um, as we conclude uh, to this interview, uh, please, I would like to give you the floor. Uh, could you please share with us something that no one else knows when you were writing this book? What was the challenging moment? Was there any a funny moment or a, a challenge you have been facing between us uh, during the, the edition of this book, uh, something you would like to share with uh, the, the readers of the book? Well, I think I think since uh, since of, of the panel, Lawrence was probably the most uh, intimately involved with the uh, with working and um, liaising with the publisher, then maybe he should start. <clears throat> yeah, I think the most interesting part of the book was like, to connect with all the students from all over the globe, to find like a, a moment where we can catch up and discuss how we want to develop the chapter further. That's like the most challenging part. But oh, besides, I'm, gonna, also, I'm gonna interrupt you right there, Lawrence, because yeah. you, we need to make this clear. This isn't students necessarily from last summer. This is no. students who yeah. were part of this project, this class. Yeah. 10 years totally, ago, yeah. nine years ago, eight years from yeah. three different universities. They were parts of teams seven years ago, nine years ago. Lawrence was the one who was tasked with tracking them down, finding them uh, uh, like the Canadian Mounties. He <laughs> always gets his man or his woman. Yeah, definitely. But we were able to do it. It was an amazing experience. I learned a lot of it. And now I'm happy to have the book in my um, in my bookshelf. Awesome. Perfect. Uh, I think a very delighted uh, production. Also, it looks a, a very nice moment. The 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 summer school and all the school, uh, all the well, people... you, you know, Christine. I'm also going to uh, to try to trigger uh, Jonah and Alicia about this. And it's a question you asked. What they started with 
was a framework from the 2015 book, Everything in Its Place, the Strategic Management of Cities, Regions, and States. And as they said, this is a, they say theoretical. What that means is it doesn't say particular policy analysis or advice for any one particular place, whether it's Paris, where I'm sitting now, or um, uh, Bloomington, where Lawrence is, but rather, as they said, it's general. Well, they had to, and I'd like them to talk about this. They're the ones who've been working with the students every summer in Bergamo and in uh, Augsburg, because the Indiana students would uh, travel there. Uh, I have to say, Joe, and I think you've been living uh, 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 in Europe and Augsburg maybe too long because you you didn't translate the phrase summer school. That means uh, yeah. in, in, in our country, you may recall what summer school means. It's school for people who flunked during the year and right. it's remedial. But the European translation into our language is it's an overseas study course where the students go overseas and they're on the ground. In this case, they work with their with teams from other other classes. But what they had to do was Joni used that word translate. And it's a great class, a great example almost of technology transfer or translational research from a concept that's basic science. But it, as, as Alicia said in Lawrence, it doesn't tell any place what to do, but they had to get the students organized in teams. I'd like to hear them talk about that challenge, Work, going from the basic idea to then operationalizing it, knowing what should the students do. Well, uh, as usual, you know, when you work uh, with students from different backgrounds, first of all, because they come from different disciplinary areas and also, of course, from different countries, there are always um, different ways of approaching uh, problems and creating solutions. So, first of all, having teamwork, um, it's interesting also for a researcher like me to see how people interact uh, um, with each other and address eventual issues. And I mean, I always think that they were very good in, um, I don't know how to say it, but take the uh, theoretical part as we were presenting it and then try to develop um, a synergical framework about both the conditions and the solution, of course. Um, we experience different level of, let's say, autonomy and independence in doing it, because of course there are some groups that are able to, I don't know, uh, manage themselves better than others, but it's uh, normal in human being and when you work in teams, but still it's exciting uh, during the years, how students became, became more um, self-aware about like themselves, but also about their role into the teams. They were very good in um, learning by doing. And I think that every year is always better than the year before. So that's why we are so excited about our summer school and also the uh, outcome that it came out. Uh, uh, for me, from the working with students aspect, I think sometimes it's it's potentially cliche that we say as, as professors and teachers that we we learn more from students than they learn from us. Uh, but I think sometimes it's true. And in this in this particular case, um, I, I mean, as we know, economic development is a is an interdisciplinary practice. And we have our particular lens with which we view how the framework is applied to these different places. But essentially, a, a framework's a tool, and it's affected by the backgrounds, the context, the experiences, the biases of the person holding the tool. So while I might get a specific result from analyzing a place with the tool, my students that come from di very different places, very different experiences might unearth something that I would never see. And I think that played out a lot in the cases that were applied, where if I wasn't if I was doing a good job of being a, a teacher and not putting my thumb on the scales too much to see how they would apply the framework and just let them do their thing, I would learn more from how they would go through the process um, than if I just did it with my own specific lens. Um, and so perhaps that's also one of the things that's important here is it's 
this shouldn't be something that's done in a in, as an individual practice. That these things, like many public policy decisions, are best done together. And our student groups, I think, exemplified that because you can complement the perspectives from one another because within the group you're diverse. And uh, I think that's one of the big takeaways I got from working with the students. Thank you very much for sharing uh, your uh, takeaways, the information about the book. Uh, it was a real pleasure for me to uh, to hear you and uh, learn more about uh, the specificities of the book, its originality. So I would like to thank you, David, Alice, uh, Jonah, uh, Lawrence, uh, for uh, uh, accepting to share your, um, your insights to the journey uh, for uh, editing this book. Um, which is uh, also available from the Springer's web website in two formats, in ebook and hard, uh, hardcover book. So everyone can uh, purchase or have access uh, through uh, the Springer's website. So I'd like to thank you again and uh, we look forward to, to your next uh, books and uh, next ideas. Thank you, Christina. Thank you.